Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be ranking the tallest building in each US state and DC by their appearance. Now keep in mind that this is subjective so this video is my opinion. Now this list is only including complete buildings so some states may have new buildings that are technically taller but they're not going to be included because they're not finished yet. Multiple other YouTubers have also made the same video which is fine because we all have different opinions so this one is my opinion. Anyways, let's get started with this video. So first up, in number 51, we have what I think is the ugliest tallest building in all of the US, the Panorama Tower in Miami, Florida. Now I'm not a big fan of 21st century modern architecture, and especially not a fan of glass apartment buildings. I think the balconies just make them look messy and ugly, but at least it's functional and fits in with the rest of the condos in Miami. But going off a pure appearance standpoint, this is my least favourite tallest building in all of the US. Next in number 50, we have the Central Ala Moana in Honolulu, Hawaii. Again, it's another modern condo apartment building, but this one is slightly better than the Panorama Tower because I think it looks a little bit less messy. Now, if you look at the facade, you'll notice that the balconies are not very uniform, which gives off a slightly messy appearance, and that is why I place it as second last. Now, next in number 49, we have the Beau Rivage Casino in Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, I know casinos are meant to look wacky, like the ones in Las Vegas do, but this one just looks silly. It just looks like a giant blob with the Beau Rivage logo on it, and that's really all I have to say. Next in 48, we have the St. Joseph's Church in Biddleford, Maine. It's just a basic church, and while it doesn't look that bad for a church, it ranks just low compared to other buildings on this list because there's just better buildings. Next we have the CenturyLink Tower in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Now, I don't really like the colours and the crisscross facade, but I think the base makes it look a lot worse. I just don't like that arch at the base, as I think it looks out of place, plus there's better looking buildings on this list, which places this one at number 47. So now we move on to the buildings that I like a little bit more, but I still think they have major flaws in their appearance that make them look ugly. So next in number 46, we have the West Virginia State Capitol in Charleston, West Virginia. It's a nice building, but it's this low just because of the colour. The grey colour makes the building look dirty and unpolished, and a lot less appealing, which places this one at number 46. Next in number 45, we have the Western Virginia Beach Town Centre in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The balconies on the building mess up the building in my opinion, but especially on the sides of the building. The sides just look horrendous to me. Next in 44, we have 99 Hudson Street in Jersey City, New Jersey. The building I think looks quite messy as it does not have a uniform facade. However, apart from that, I think it's quite unremarkable, so I'm placing it low because of just that. Next in 43, we have the Epic Centre in Wichita, Kansas. Now I like the facade, but I think the roof and angle of the building, being a diamond when viewed for the street, ruin it. From the side, the roof just looks silly, and I think it's a flaw in the appearance, which places it at number 43 for me. Next in number 42, we have the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington DC. This is a pretty nice basilica, and I don't have much against it. However, I think compared to the other buildings on this list, there are just a lot more better looking ones, which is why I've ranked it this low. Next in 41, we have the 8th and Main Tower in Boise, Idaho. When viewed from behind, it looks decent as it's all nice and uniform, but from the front and side, the glass facade just mismatches with the rest of the facade, which I think ruins the look and places this in the bottom 10. Now next in number 40, we have the Resorts World Las Vegas Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't think this building is too bad, but there's just better looking state tallest buildings, and they all beat this one, so I'm going to leave this one near the bottom. Now next in 39, we have the first interstate centre in Billings, Montana. It's an alright building, but the indent down the middle of the facade ruins the look. Otherwise it's quite unremarkable. Next in number 38, we have the City Place 1 in Hartford, Connecticut. I like the shape and colour of the building, but the reason why I place it so low is because of the roof. In my opinion, the roof ruins the look of the whole building, but from close, when you can't see the roof, I actually quite like the building. Now we move on to buildings that I think are decent. The middle of the pack. I think some of these buildings have some minor flaws, but they're not too bad. So next in number 37, we have the City Hall Plaza in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is a nice building for a small city like Manchester. It's got a nice facade with a nice shape and nice colours, but the floor in this building is the southern facade, which has a large blank section, which bumps this building down to number 37. Next in number 36, we have the first National Bank Tower in Omaha, Nebraska. It's got a nice design, which I really like, but the building does look a little bit chubby from certain angles. That's really all I have to say. Now the next few buildings I'm going to rapid fire because I don't have too much criticism or acclaim for them. 
but I'll make a few comments on them if I think it's suitable. So next in number 35 we have the AT&T building in Nashville, Tennessee, also nicknamed the Batman building because of its appearance. Now next in number 34 we have the Wyoming Financial Center in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Now I really like the geometric style and footprint of this building, it adds some character to a pretty basic building. Next in 33 we have the Decker Towers in Burlington, Vermont. This is the shortest tallest building in all of the US and it looks like a nice apartment block, not too flashy but not too boring. Next in 32 we have the Comcast Technology Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I really like the spire on this one. Next in 31 we have the Devon Energy Center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Pretty nice building and has a nice shape. Next in number 30 we have the Renaissance Center in Detroit, Michigan. Although only the center tower counts, the surrounding four towers complement the first one very well. So as a multi-tower complex it looks very nice, but the main tower itself is quite unremarkable, being just a glass cylinder. Next in 29 we have the North Dakota State Capitol in Bismarck, North Dakota. Now this building is a pretty nice example of Art Deco architecture and I think it looks pretty good, however it's rather basic which places it here at number 29. Next in number 28 we have the Capitol Center in Columbia, South Carolina. It's a nice corporate office building and the building looks very smooth and clean. However, my only criticism is the round edges and those black lines on the facade. I think it makes the building look a lot less sharp, but it's not too bad as it's hard to see from far away. Next in number 27, we have the JP Morgan Chase Tower in Houston, Texas. There's not much to say about this building other than how I like the pentagonal shape. And the tower is also the tallest building in the world with five sides, which I thought was an interesting fact. Next in number 26, we enter the dead middle of the pack with the Republic Center in Denver, Colorado. It's basic but modest. Next in 25 we have the Lake Mason building in Baltimore, Maryland. Again, basic but modest. Next in 24 we have the ConocoPhillips building in Anchorage, Alaska. Now this one's pretty basic, but I like how the building looks like a split in half from some angles. It's a pretty clever design. Next in number 23 we have the Wells Fargo Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now I like the shape and the color on this one, and it has a nice modern style without looking too cheesy and messy, which I think looks great. Next in 22 we have one Kansas City place in Kansas City, Missouri. Now this one looks pretty cool and gives off a very corporate mood which is perfect for a city downtown. Something interesting about this building is that it is actually meant to resemble the nearby Kansas City Hall but in the modern style. Now next in number 21 we have the Age on Tower in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a pretty basic building however the thing that makes it look really cool is the dome on the roof. It complements the structure very well and gives the building a very official courthouse style look which is great for downtown. Next in number 20 we have the Wilshire Grand Center in Los Angeles, California. It's got a nice streamlined shape to it and the blue glass isn't too overpowering, being a nice light blue color. Now we leave the middle of the pack and enter the section of buildings that I really like. These ones I can dwell on for a bit longer so I can explain why I like them so much. So next in number 19 we have the Simmons Tower in Little Rock, Arkansas. This building looks quite basic from the sides when viewed from the northeast, you can see this really cool looking stepping pattern on the building. I think the geometric shape of the building is really nice and this places the building at number 19. Next in number 18, we have the RSA Battlehouse Tower in Mobile, Alabama. Not only does this building have an awesome name, but it also looks really cool. The spire and the roof make the building look great to me and it also looks a little bit like a rocket ship, which I really like. Next in 17, we have the Bank of America Corporate Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. The crown in the building looks amazing and really does make the building look like a corporate headquarter, like the name suggests. Now the building also looks Art Deco inspired and I really like Art Deco architecture which for me places this building at number 17. Next in number 16 we have 801 Grand in Des Moines, Iowa. Now this is a really good example of postmodern architecture from the 90s. It's completely symmetrical and it's got a good design. I really like the colours used as they contrast well and the crown on the roof is a perfect addition to give the tower a complete look. In number 15 we have the Key Tower in Cleveland, Ohio. This one looks very nice and shares a lot of resemblance with the Empire State Building which by far is one of my favourite buildings of all time. Now the grey coloured roof also gives off lots of nice contrast to the building which places it at number 15. Next in number 14 we have 1201 North Market Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Now this reminds me of the Rockefeller Center in New York City, but with a modern facade. Now I really like the stepping pattern on this building, but I especially like the facade, and the colors on the facade. The facade uses a bright white along with light blue windows, which gives off a nice polished appearance.
Next in number 13, we have the Wells Fargo Centre in Portland, Oregon. Now this one is good. It has a striking design with those white pillars, which contrasts extremely well with the black facade, but it also tapers as it rises, which gives off a unique twist to a somewhat basic building. Also at night time, the building looks really cool with those floodlights at each corner. Next in number 12, we have Albuquerque Plaza in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now this one looks like your typical 90s office building, but what I really like about this one in particular is the colours, and especially the orange tip on the roof. Now it matches really well with a desert city like Albuquerque, and it just has a unique feel to it. I also really like how the tip has a skylight on the very top. Now next in number 11, we have the Hancock Whitney Centre in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now you're probably thinking, why this box building? This is by far one of my most favourite international skyscrapers in the whole world, and I like it so much because of just how clean and sharp it looks. The building is nice bright white with black windows to contrast, and when if you look at a picture of the building, you can always see multiple window washers on the tower, which just shows how clean the building is, as it's constantly being washed. Now we enter the top 10 with the Bank of America Plaza in Atlanta, Georgia. Now this building is nicknamed the Pencil, and this is due to its pencil-like appearance. Now the tower is strikingly vertical, towering over midtown Atlanta. Its clay colour also gives a unique appearance, and the lattice-like tip completes the building's appearance. Overall, it's my 10th favourite state tallest building in all of the US. Next in number 9, we have the Industrial National Bank Building in Providence, Rhode Island. Nicknamed the Superman Building because of its resemblance to the Daily Planet Building, this is a great example of Art Deco architecture. The building has a really cool stepping up pattern, which makes it look taller than it really is, and the building is also capped by this really cool spire. Next in number 8, we have the Salesforce Tower in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's got a cool pattern on its facade, and it's got a nice shape. However, the main thing I like so much about this building is the roof and the two antennae. The white roof creates a really unique look, and it is made even better by those two antennae. Overall, it's my favourite state tallest building in the US. Next in number 7, we have the Columbia Center in Seattle, Washington. This one is extremely unique. It's got a very, very unique shape, being formed out of two free arc-like sections which overlap each other. The sections are also all different heights, which creates an interesting look. Combined with that shiny black polished look, you get a very cool and very stylish and unique building. Now we move on to the top 6, which are my favourite state tallest buildings in the US. So next in number 6, we have the US Bank Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now I know it's a pretty basic 70s box office tower, but those cross supports midway and at the top of the tower add so much uniqueness to the building in my opinion. I'm also a big fan of international style architecture, so that bright white colour and the contrasting black windows, along with the sharp lines, combines to create this beautiful building. Next in number 5, we have the One World Trade Center in New York City, New York. Now this is one of my favourite buildings in the whole world, as well as the US, mainly because of the shape. It has a really unique geometric shape which is formed by 8 glass clad triangles and a white trim along the edges. The building is also capped with a really cool spire that has guy wires tying it down. So overall, this is my 5th favourite tallest building in the US. Next in number 4, we have the IDS Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now this building is incredibly unique. It has a very sharp geometric appearance with a sideways stepping pattern at the corners. The building also has a very clean, shiny polished appearance and is topped by two antennae. At the base of the building, there's also this really cool glass atrium. It looks a bit like a shiny diamond and works really well with the tower. Next in number three, we have the Sears Tower in Chicago, Illinois. Now it's pretty hard for most people to not have this in at least their top five. Who doesn't like the Sears Tower? It's famous for its tubed bundle design and striking an appearance. Now the building looks even better at dawn and dusk when the sun is reflecting off the glass, and at night time when the spires glow up, it looks even cooler. Overall, it's my third favourite state tallest building in all of the US. Next in number 2, we have the John Hancock Tower in Boston, Massachusetts. Now I like this one a lot. Its striking blue glass appearance, black indents on the side and rhombic shape create a geometric and visually striking office tower. I also really like how you can clearly see the steel frame that the blue glass is hung from, and at the daytime, the building can sometimes blend in with the sky, which looks really cool. Finally, in number one, we have what I believe to be the best tallest building in all of the US, the Chase Tower in Phoenix, Arizona. From the front and back, it looks like a completely different building, but that is just because of its incredibly unique design. The building is comprised of four segments, when three of them are clad with blue glass, and the last segment is a beige concrete mechanical section, which rises to full height of the building. Now, I think the design of the building is very unique, and I especially like the contrast between the blue and beige. Overall, this is my favourite state tallest building in all of the US. 
Anyways, that is it for this video. Again, that was my opinion and I'm interested to hear what you think, so comment down below. Now here is a tier list that I made on this list, which ranks all the buildings from good to bad. Now anyways, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe for more similar videos, and I'll see you next time.